Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a quick summary video on the second Boomerang Ranger jet that we've built on the channel. Uh, this one is uh, a little bit different than the first one we built. And a few of you guys asked for a summary video kind of covering all the changes, the light system installation, stuff like that. So hang tight and we'll show you all the changes and the light installation on this Boomerang Ranger. All right, guys, first Ranger I built, uh, it's actually still up there and uh, great aircraft, awesome. We're actually making a bunch of changes to that one as well too, primarily based around the radio system. The owner has decided to switch over to Jetty. We originally installed JR in that, uh, in that aircraft and we'll be switching it out to a Jetty system. So uh, we do have that one to compare, but we won't really look at that one. We'll just look at all the changes and stuff that we did and do a summary on this one. So first big change, um, not a, not a huge one, doesn't really matter, but uh, we ordered a Revic wing bag kit for this aircraft. The first one that we built, we used the, uh, the bags that were available from uh, Boomerang Jets. I can't remember the name of them right now, but anyways, that's, uh, that's a change. We've gone with the foil bags for the, uh, the Ranger. Both work quite well, uh, but that's kind of the first obvious change. All right, so the core of the aircraft has remained the same. We actually use the exact same servo package on this Ranger that we did on the first one. Um, I can't remember exactly what we did for wing connectors, but I ended up using an MPX connector for the uh, gear and brakes and some other things, gear brakes and something else. And then we've got uh, aileron <clears throat> uh, flap and uh, tip light there. So anyways, that is the, uh, oh yeah, gear brake and landing gear light. So that's what the MPX connector is for. Uh, the reason I use this is because I had them in stock and I didn't have any six pin uh, ash lock connectors. So that's why we went with those ones. This one actually works out well. Uh, I installed a lock on it and it fits uh, in the wing or in the fuselage very nicely. So that's kind of the, one of the first changes. Let's pop the hatch off and we'll take a look at inside the aircraft, which is a huge change. All right, so while we're popping the canopy off, we'll talk about uh, the canopy itself. So we ended up blacking out the canopy. And uh, when I did that, I also took out all the cockpit stuff that was uh, installed previously. So I can't remember on the first one if it was a 3D printed material or not, but the, uh, the cockpit tub for this one was 3D printed. So I think we ended up saving about 80 grams in the front end by pulling that off. And uh, you can see the open area there. And the other thing that that allows is to put the antenna here and the antenna actually sits above the airframe. So that's a change as well too. And I think it looks better on this model with having the blacked out canopy. I'm a fan of that with a, a color scheme like this. So that's kind of one of the, the huge changes, I guess, uh, visually on the outside that we made. Okay, core of the aircraft is the same. So we have the, the same Swiwin 120 engine. That's perfect. Tailpipes, the stock tailpipe. Uh, because we knew that we needed to put the batteries back here right away, uh, I made a battery house that's glued in place. Uh, the tank has been siliconed in place and that silicone touches the, uh, the battery holder here. And also there's some at the front of the, uh, the tank near the bottom. So if you do ever have to take the tank out, it isn't a, a crazy chore. You just cut the, uh, the silicone with a knife. And then we've got our, uh, our Velcro strap there as well too. So that's kind of the... The, uh, the engine, the fuel system, uh, battery ends and all that stuff has basically remained the same. We kept this one light as well, even though we've got the light system installed. So we've got our turbine battery here, and then we've got our two receiver batteries. And one of these receiver batteries runs the light system and the other one runs the landing gear. So that's how that stuff's being divided up. 
Now, big change inside the aircraft is the radio system. So we've gone with a jetty system here, and uh, there's a couple changes with the jetty system. So we are using two batteries into, I can't remember what it's called, but it's one of the, their little remote uh, BEC things. We've got a remote on-off switch hooked into that. So the on-off of the aircraft is done from the radio. And then that battery... Uh, from the BEC comes in and feeds the Rex 12. So we've got one battery feed coming into the Rex 12, which is awesome, perfect, no problems with it. And then the Cortex is set up uh, through the bus system, and then all of our outputs go into the Cortex Pro. Now, when you're setting something up like this, you actually have the 12 channels available of the Rex 12 receiver, and then you've got the six slash seven channels available of the Cortex. So you actually have more channels than just 12. You conceivably have like 18 channels available to you, 18, 19 channels, when you use this type of setup. Great for sports jets, perfect, awesome setup. Uh, we're using the stock uh, controller that comes with the landing gear, the stock landing gear. Other big change compared to the first one is we're using a Boomerang Jets uh, composite UAT or bubble trap. These, I used to use these in all my jets. I can't remember who made them before, but they stopped making them. But I actually really liked these, uh, these UATs or bubble traps. They work well. This one came with its own mount. You could either flat mount it or angle mount it. We decided to angle mount it. So nice setup there. Happy with that. The rest of the stuff is basically the same. We've got our on-off switch here for our light system, uh, which is a Sky Candy light system, and that'll be one of the things we spend the most time talking about in this video. And then what I did is I just went ahead and installed screens over the intakes. So those I just cut and glued in place with uh, two-part epoxy. And then we put some screens over the big uh, area in the bottom and this upper intake. So all of our wires that come forward actually go through the small little holes down in the bottom corner. There's no screen over that material, but uh, this takes care of most of the grass that's gonna come up through the nose. Um, I don't know if this is 100% necessary. Really depends where you fly and stuff, but I uh, just went ahead and did it anyway, so I don't have to do it afterwards. So that's basically the nuts and bolts of the changes we made on the aircraft. Uh, we've got uh, two strips or one full strip of lead in the nose here, and that is perfectly balanced right now with about uh, a quarter tank of fuel, which is probably what we're gonna be landing with. So that'll get adjusted. We may be able to pull that out more, but uh, that's what we're using for uh, our CG. And uh, that's it. So let's get this plane put together and we'll talk more about the installation of the Sky Candy landing lights and lighting system. All right, guys, and it is giveaway time. Now, my buddy Joe sent me this stuff to give away to you guys, and uh, I figured this would be a great video to do it in. So Joe's been 3D printing my stuff for a couple years now, and I appreciate everything he does. I throw him an idea, he just gets it done, and it also allows me to support a local guy as well too. So when you guys buy stuff, from my website, you're supporting me and my friend. And uh, you also have the opportunity now, if you have any custom projects or anything like that. So feel free to reach out to him if you have anything that you need. There's his contact information right there. And I'll put a link down below with that information as well too. Now, Joe has sent us this aluminum plaque and uh, very, very cool. I'm a pilot, pilot, I can fly. I actually have a t-shirt done with this logo as well too. And pretty cool stuff. So this is going to be paired up with this, which uh, let's take a look at it. So this is some of the products that I already carry on my website. So you kind of have a whole plane's worth of products here. So thank you so much, Joe, for sending this. Um, let's take a look at this stuff. So we've got a UAT holder there. We've got an XT60 battery plug. Uh, we've got the top mounted and the, and the flush mounted version. We've got a few different through fittings here as well too. The square ones, the rectangle ones, two round ones. And uh, this is one of the recent additions to my site. I think, I, I can't remember if I've added this or not, but anyways, the smaller round ones. I like the round ones actually, because they're, um, they're just easier to install because you can just use a drill bit to go through. Uh, we've got some six millimeter through fittings. There's another 
through fitting. We've got a Festo valve or Pisco valve holder. That's awesome. I love those things. We've got some, uh, looks like six millimeter line holders, a little bag there. And then we've got some eight wire holders as well too. So whole bunch of stuff here, uh, definitely a good value, uh, especially because it's free. And then we're also gonna have the plaque included. So this whole bundle is a giveaway in this video. So here's the kicker. How do you win this stuff? Well, you need to, number one, be a subscriber on the channel. Number two, like this video, give it a thumbs up. Number three, and this is the most important, they're all important, but this, this one is how you guys get picked to win these prizes. In the comments down below on YouTube, you have to use the word 3D. So the number three and the letter D in your comment. Doesn't matter how you use it, but use it. I'll throw it up on the screen here. So 3D put together, rate, there, 3D. Got to use 3D in your comment down below. Uh, about a week after this video goes live, we will pick the winner of these products. So be a subscriber. Give the video a thumbs up down below. Use 3D in your comment down below. Thank you, Joe, for providing these for the giveaway. I really appreciate it. And uh, I know all the viewers appreciate it as well too. Let's get back to the Ranger. Okay, so first, thing before I flip this fuselage over, put it on the mount, uh, the beacon light on the bottom, it's going to be hard to show you because the turbine's in the way, but the beacon light is right underneath there. So it's right underneath the front of the turbine. The other great thing about the Sky Candy landing lights is they come, Sal puts the wiring harnesses all together. So my wiring harness is actually sitting underneath the tank here, but it's completely plug and play, super easy to install and uh, pretty awesome stuff. So the beacon is sitting down there, insanely bright. We're gonna put this thing together so you guys can check out all the lights, but that is the belly beacon. It's red, flashes, it is crazy how bright that thing is. So let's put this thing on the stand. We'll pull the wings out and take a look at the wings, how we got the lights installed. Okay, so while we're on the topic of differences, the reason I ordered the Revic bags is uh, number one, they're shaped for the wings. Uh, so that's kind of a nice feature, not a big deal, but I do like the fact that there's an equipment pocket here for the carbon rods for the, the wings, uh, which is nice. So uh, that's why I went with the Revic bag option. Um, let's pull these wings out here and we will take a look at the, uh, the lighting setup install. Okay, so here is our wing. So everything's pretty standard for the, uh, the wing setup. Nothing changed functionally for the wing setup. Uh, we've got the colored marker light from Sky Candy. So we've got the red and green lights on the, uh, the tips here, on the, uh, the end of the wings. And we've glued the little lenses on there as well too. The, uh, the wing tip lights, uh, these are awesome. Exact same setup we did on the, uh, oops, we did on the other, uh, the other aircraft. So pretty straightforward with that. Uh, you're basically cutting the, uh, the tip off, installing the lights. Now, what I did was there is, again, thank you Sky Candy, all the, the guts of these two lights is inside the pod. So it gets installed through the end and then you put the lights together. There's only one connection going into the wing, just a, a, a single servo connector. So that's all that needs to happen there, which is great. Okay, now landing lights, these are pretty straightforward. Um, the, probably the hardest part of the landing light is routing the wires. Now, when we extend this gear, I'll show you in more detail uh, how we ran the wires, but these landing lights, really all I did was just glue them with Hisol 9462 onto the leg. I made sure I scuffed up the leg a little bit first and uh, glued them in place, clamped them down, and then just lined them up so they were pointing perfectly forward on the aircraft. So really wasn't difficult to get the landing light installed. And then we did exactly the same thing on the nose light. Again, we'll take a look at that when we, uh, when we extend the gear. You can see the connections here pair up with what I showed you on the, uh, the fuselage side. So that's the wing, pretty straightforward. Um, our landing light kind of routes this way underneath the wing tube and straight over. 
so it doesn't go back or anything like that. So when this gear does compress like this, it is squishing the, the lines and stuff, but we do have that line all wrapped in snake skin as well. So that part's good. Okay guys, so a couple uh, kind of important things with the Ranger here, just out of design, the, the gear doesn't allow the wings to be installed before it's dropped. So when I uh, put these planes or design these planes or build the planes, whatever you want to call it, I make sure that the, uh, the leads here are long enough. So what I can do is install the wings like this on the stand and then we can get the, uh, the gear and everything plugged in, turn the plane on, drop the landing gear, and then we can finish putting the wings on. So uh, easy peasy as long as you plan for it. You know, if you run these connections too tight, you won't be able to do this and it's gonna be a bit of a pain. So make sure you leave yourself a, a decent amount of length there. All right, so we've got our wings installed. This is one of those cool things that I really like about Jetty. So if we turn our radio on. Ranger. Normal. Timer is on and the gear is all up. And we will turn our aircraft on. There we go. So now we can drop the gear. Perfect. Now we can turn the plane back off and finish installing the wings. All right, so we have our wings installed. We will turn the aircraft back on now. Normal. Ranger. Okay, so the lighting system will not turn on because we have not turned the power on there. So the reason we put a switch here for the power is the battery comes into the switch, goes out to the lighting system. Um, if you don't put the power switch in here, you can damage the digital switch that's built into the system. So you can either have a battery lead or a digital switch like this, but um, we do have our lighting system set up to the gear system. So when I turn this on now, what's gonna happen is all of the lights are gonna turn on and when I do a gear up command, the gear lights turn off, but all the other lights stay on. So before we drop the gear, here's a shot of the nose light. So just like the main lights, just glued that in place, ran the wires up and covered it in snake skin so it's uh, completely protected until it gets back about six to eight inches. Okay, so we're gonna flick our lights on. Ha, and there we go. So we've got our one wingtip light. We've got our green light. We've got our gear light on the right main, the nose gear light. You can see our beacon down below flashing away. <laughs> and then same thing on this side with our red marker light. So the lighting system is definitely a highlight of this aircraft. Thank you Sky Candy for supplying the lighting system. You guys do such an amazing job with uh, these lighting kits. Um, they're, just, they're just phenomenal. I mean, look at that, that thing is amazing. Coming in, it's gonna be just a band of lights coming across the sky. It's gonna be so nice. Okay, and then if we do our gear up command, landing gear lights turn off. And then we still have our flying lights, right? So we've got our wingtip lights, our crazy red beacon on the underside, and there she be. So the Sky Candy landing lights are actually run from the turbine battery. I think initially I said they were run off of one of the, uh, the receiver batteries. They're not, they're run off of the turbine battery, so they're paired up with that. Uh, because they run off of a uh, 12 volt system. So the only light that's actually using 12 volts is the belly light because it's a full scale aviation light and all the other ones, uh, the, the actual Sky Candy white landing lights, they run off of like four and a half to six volts. So there's a regulator in each wing tip and there's a regulator for the, uh, the rest of the system. So um, pretty straightforward install. The only thing, if you're thinking about a landing light setup for your legs, so the, the landing gear lights are smaller. 
So compared to the normal Sky Candy landing lights, we're missing about half of the depth here. So all of the electronics that are in the back of this light are actually located separate. So there's a great instruction sheets that, that comes with the light and everything. So that still has to be in line with the system. It doesn't matter where it is. So we actually have this lead here going all the way back. And then it's uh, that little uh, electronic board piece is actually right before it plugs into the harness. So that, my friends, is the layout for the lighting system. And that is a summary of this magnificent <laughs> Ranger aircraft. All right, so the few details that we need to also add to this video is a couple things. So lots of people have been asking about the control throws that I ended up with because the manual isn't correct. Um, I'll throw the weight up here as well too. So we've got number one, the weight of the aircraft with just fuel in the UAT. And then we've got the weight of the aircraft with uh, about a quarter tank of fuel roughly. So this is the weight that I did the uh, center of gravity check at. Now, as far as controls and stuff go, the, uh, the stock CG, which is on the, the main wing tube, works good. It's a good, uh, good point to, to measure at, so that's pretty straightforward. Uh, flap measurement, we ended up using the standard measurement, so I, I can't remember what that is, but that's takeoff flaps. And, uh, or actually takeoff flaps, they don't suggest anything, and then landing flaps, I just use the suggested number. So that's straightforward. Uh, rudder. Basically max the rudder out. We could go a little bit more, but uh, we're using the one inch JR horns and uh, we've got a decent amount of rudder movement. So I think it's about 42 millimeters, I think. Uh, elevator movement, we've got about 12 millimeters up and down. That's kind of my, uh, my recommended starting point for this aircraft. If you go more than that, it's gonna be really sensitive on the elevators and the ailerons. So 12 is a good starting point to adjust from there. We've got 25% expo and uh, the ailerons are the same thing. So we've got about 12 millimeters of movement. Expo wise, you can see all the, the numbers here. So we've got 25% uh, on all the surfaces. And then when we turn the gyro off, we go up to 35% expo. So that's, uh, that's the amounts that we're using. We'll adjust those on the first few flights as well. So that's the details of the setup uh, as a starting point. Obviously, your setup and mileage will likely vary depending on how you feel and how you like your aircraft to be set up. I don't fly my aircraft with different rates, so I won't have a, uh, a rate where I've got more throw while I'm flying, less throw while I'm landing, or vice versa. Uh, I usually set them up with one rate on a, on a jet scenario. So anyways, that's how I set things up. All right, guys, and that is a little summary for you of my Ranger. Uh, thank you again, Boomerang, for supplying this aircraft. Uh, when I got the opportunity to build that first Ranger and test fly it, absolutely fell in love with this little plane. It is a beautiful, simple, uh, boomerang product and uh, it's, ju it's just a treat to fly. It's an absolute hoot. Thank you Sky Candy for putting the lighting system together. Uh, really, really cool. Uh, the other thing that we got from Boomerang is like I mentioned the UAT. Uh, that was also part of the package. And then we got two uh, of the, um, the receiver packs from Boomerang as well too. So that guys is everything. I encourage you to Add a light system to any of your planes, but specifically if you're building a Ranger, definitely think about adding a lighting system. Uh, at the very least, the wingtip lights are awesome uh, with the marker lights. If you go a little bit above and beyond and add the gear lights and the belly beacon, it does obviously add some cost, but the coolness factor is next level for sure. So if you guys have any questions, make sure you list them down below. And don't forget, if you want to be entered to win the bag of 3D parts and this beautiful plaque that go together uh, from my buddy Joe, who does all my 3D printing, don't forget to comment down below, including your comment, 3D. The number three, the letter D, put together just like that right there. And uh, we will uh, pick a winner in about a week after this video coming out. So. 
Thank you guys for supporting the channel. Really look forward to uh, 2023. I'm recording this just before the end of 2022. So um, looking forward to a great year, a great season, a uh, whole bunch of flying this year. It's gonna be an absolute blast and a whole bunch of builds. So thank you guys. Thank you for all your support and we'll see you in the next video.